My name is John Russell. I am the CEO of a company called Jevex. Jevex Inc. is focused heavily on software sales. Very new company. I started this company to help my other company, Arbor Solutions, from a sales standpoint, as well as bring other products to the market. I am also the chairman of the board for Arbor Solutions. My brother and I started that um, in, in 2003. This particular company has grown. We're about 45 people um, headquartered in Pickering. We also have offices in the UK and in Australia. I am also on the board at Spark Center. Spark Center is a regional innovation center. I was born in Jamaica, in, the, in Clarendon. I lived in Jamaica for six years. Then my parents decided to go to Canada. The reality is my mom and dad were looking ahead and thinking about you know, that next step, that next journey for us. My dad was a carpenter by trade. He was in Canada probably for about three years prior to bringing the rest of us. In terms of moving to Canada versus any other country in the world, it really was about family. And, and for us, you know, we had family members in different parts of the world. We had family members in the UK. We had family members here. But I think the thing that uh, was more impactful for my parents was that we had some immediate family members in, in Canada. Big part for me, certainly at six years old, there wasn't a lot of ambition that, uh, that I had. I think my father was a big driving factor in, in, in my growth. My father is a carpenter by trade. For me, it was all about spending time with him and watching him do what he does. That was very impactful. And it was impactful from the standpoint of being able to see somebody actually start something and go through the process of creating a space and building out a space and to the final finalization of it was huge. It allowed the creative side of me to grow. So it kind of shaped my first journey into where I wanted to go from a post-secondary school standpoint. It was all focused around architecture. That's where I spent the beginning part of my career, working with architectural companies, with design companies. For my family, it really was about, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's about that better opportunity. And uh, when they came to Canada, you know, we lived in the city for about nine years. So we lived in Toronto for um, two years, and um, then we moved out to Oshawa. We lived in Oshawa for, uh, for another eight to nine years. And then they took us out into the country. And this was a ridiculous adjustment for us as kids. So you're taking kids from the city, moving us out to the country to, to make matters worse. I mean, there weren't any black folks out there, but I think it was one of the best things my parents ever did. It created within us a different drive, I would think. One, it was a drive to succeed. It was a drive to overcome you know, challenges um, based on the situation that you're in. It allowed us to look at life in a little bit of a different way. I mean, we excelled. We excelled in school. We excelled in sports. And you know, from an education standpoint, um, we're always at the top of our class, which was fantastic. We looked at life and we enjoyed life in a much different way. And you're um, helping the various farmers, you know, bailing hay, working uh, with, with, with animals and, and things that you wouldn't necessarily do in the city. We're in a country ripe with opportunities. I looked at the opportunities and while I was good at architecture and while I really enjoyed it, you know, I thought there was more that I could certainly do. And one of the things that I did was to start my first business. It was a small um, architectural design business where I worked with you know, companies from Brookfield to Page to Cadillac, Fairview, and so forth. With my brother, we came together and we said, hey, you know what? We want to create a company that we can help bring uh, technology software to make the lives of our clients easier. So initially, we started in the AC industry, so the architectural engineering and construction industry. We created a company called Arbro Solutions. So we started, two of us, in the basement of my house. 
we had some guys from uh, CBC Radio Canada. We had applied for this design of a website that they wanted done uh, for Cambodia. And um, they came to my house in Ajax. They came in the basement. You know, we had three guys, fantastic guys. They, we didn't even have enough chairs for them. But they came in, they sat down, and we pitched what we would do for them. Really and truly, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter who you are, there are opportunities. It's just that ability to go after it. You know, a couple weeks later, they called us back and said they were gonna give us a project. I live in a place where I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about race and I don't think about color in a lot of ways, but um, the reality is it is there in the world. I was in a particular situation, uh, this was many years after starting Arboro Solutions and most of our clients um, are law firms. So we went to this one law firm, we we're in the reception area and the gentleman that we we're meeting came out. So it was myself, black guy, my sales guy, white guy, and he comes out and he goes straight to my sales guy. My parents uh, created a, a culture within us where, um, one, we're very centered. So it's not something that we're looking at that from a racial standpoint. The reality is um, these things can happen, they do happen. I looked at it from the standpoint of, hey, yeah, mistaken identity, mistaken in who the actual you know, CEO of the company was. These are things that we can let define us and how we look at it can really shape the outcome of not only the opportunity, but the outcome of who you are. I, I would have to say my two sons are probably you know, the, uh, the, the, the thing that I'm most proud of on a personal side. You know, from a business standpoint, taking risks never settling for the status quo. The opportunities that come out of it have been uh, phenomenal thus far. So when I hear that quote, I didn't come this far to only come this far, what it tells me is uh, really and truly there is no limitations and that's what I'm all about. It really speaks to the fact that opportunities are endless and you have to drive yourself and you have to continue moving that needle in that positive direction. And I think it's a statement that allows us to move in a direction that is not limited to our past. The message and advice that I'd love to share with you know, young people, entrepreneurs, I'll put it this way, I work with entrepreneurs as, as well. I'm, I'm on the board of an organization called Spark Center. It's one of the many regional innovation centers across Canada. And Spark Center is all about working with you know, not only entrepreneurs, early stage companies, um, companies that have been in existence for a while. One of the things that I've seen is over the years is entrepreneurs, they have great ideas but they don't know how to execute on those ideas. Don't be afraid to reach out and get advice. There are various advisors who are willing to bring their knowledge to the table, especially new companies. They, they do fail um, within that first five years of business. And the more advice that you have, it will certainly mitigate the, the risk factor and allow you to, to hopefully succeed. And get those advisors as quickly as you can and have them help you shape your business. My name is John Russell, and I didn't come this far to only come this far.